everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is for the Team Tiny October 2023 hop and the theme was Halloween or scary. So we are going to be making this interactive card using some hero art supplies. So this is an old kit. I believe it's about two years old from hero arts. I cut a piece of white cardstock down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I'm covering the entire thing with distress ink in tea dye. We're going to be doing a couple things to this and I had an idea in my mind and I wasn't sure if it was going to work and I think it turned out okay in the end so you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments. So once I've gone ahead and done the entire thing in the lightest color which is the tea dye, I am going to put the die over top of it. So this is the die that came with the kit and we are going to be stamping handles down onto all of these drawers. What this die does is it cuts out three sides of each of these rectangles and it opens it up so you can put a piece of paper behind it and stamp images. You can stamp a large image and then you can just see portions of it between the doors or when you pull the doors open or you can stamp little images in each one. And I chose to stamp little images because I wanted it to be a Halloween surprise behind every door. So I decided that I wanted handles on all of the drawers and this kind of reminds me of those old card catalogs, a lot of these uh, handles where it has the label at the top and then the handle underneath of it. I love that there are a ton of different styles of handles in there. You could have done one and just did it on every single drawer, just did the same exact one. But since all of these drawers or doors are different, I thought that I would put different ones on there. And then I'm going to use the new Honey Bee 3D embossing folder that I have, which is called Wood Green. And I ran that through my die cut machine so that it would have some 3D embossing. And then I'm doing that same technique that I did in the day seven video for the mantle. I'm going over all of the inking with a couple colors of Distress ink. It was some more tea dye. I used vintage photo and also some walnut stain. And then I'm just taking a little bit of ink on the brush and going and blending that all together. There's going to be pieces that are darker than other pieces because when you look at wood, it is not all the same tone. And I wanted it to look vintagey and like, like I said, like those old, they're, are they apothecary tables? I think that may be what maybe I'm thinking of, but I do, it kind of also reminds me of those old card catalogs. So you have to let, again, let me know in the comments what you think it looks like. So I'm going back in and just doing that same technique over and over again until I like the results of it. Um, I didn't like, I think that I hit the ink pads a little bit too much, especially the dark ones on some of the embossing. Because it's 3D embossing, there are points that are a lot higher than others. And I think I really just had to touch it to the paper. I think I put a little bit too much on there. So now I'm going to put the die back over the piece and then run it through my machine. The stamp set from this kit also comes with this piece so you can stamp out where all of the images would go. So I'm going to stamp this in some MFT grout gray. It's a very, very light ink and you're not going to be able to see it once I place the other piece on top of it. But I just wanted lines to see where I would needed to stamp the images in order for them to be visible when I opened all of the doors or the drawers, whatever you want to consider them. I'm lining up the top piece just to make sure that everything is in the right place and then I'm going to stamp down the images. I'm using images from that Hero Arts set as well as some images from some Lawn Fawn sets. So while you're watching me put this together, I thought I'd talk a little bit about Team Tiny. We are a group of crafters that come together once a month to do a hop that has a theme and we have less than a thousand subscribers so we're looking to actively grow our channels and challenge ourselves with new themes every month. So it's a great group. I love to see everybody's projects every month. I can't wait to see what everybody makes for the Halloween ones. Uh, we have some more good themes lined up for this year and then Marie and I are going to think of 2020 24's themes. So 
We hope that you join us along the hop. You To see everybody's videos, all you're going to do is click on the hashtag in the title of the video. If you are interested in joining Team Tiny, if you and you are a crafter who does paper crafting on YouTube and has less than a thousand sub subscribers, I will leave the link to the Facebook group below. And all you have to do is answer the three questions and we will accept you into the group and you can participate in the hops. It's a lot of fun and it's always great to see what everyone makes. If you have any suggestions for themes or techniques that we could do in future hops, please feel free to leave them in the comments if there's something that you struggle with or you want to see more of, definitely let us know because like I said, we will be putting together themes for next year's hops soon because uh, we can't believe uh, it's almost the end of the year already. It's crazy. This year has flown by. So we will be working on 2024 stuff soon. And we would love to hear from you guys and what you would like to see. Okay, so back to the card. I am picking out some more images and then inking them up in Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink because we are going to be doing some Copic coloring. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with these images, so I did stamp them on a lighter paper. I believe this is from Joann's. The front of the paper has some texture to it and it's pretty thin paper, but I go ahead and use my Copics. And since I'm not doing a ton of Copic blending, it wasn't too bad. You'll be able to see the color through the back when I glue it down to the card front, but it's fine. So I'm just using a couple shades of orange to go ahead and shade in the pumpkin. I did not leave all of the coloring in because this did take a really long time. There are a bunch of images on here. I tried to use all of the colors in a couple different places so that even though you don't see all of the background at once, if you have some of the doors open, you'll see them in the color in multiple places. I believe the only one that I really didn't do that with is the pumpkin because the pumpkin is so large. And I'm not sure why I didn't do, um, I mean, I do have it in the candy corn and maybe one other place. So I tried to use as, like I said, as much of the colors in multiple locations if I could. So now I'm coloring in one of the potion bottles and I love doing this. I go in with the lightest color and then I go in with some darker colors over top of it and just flick that color out a little bit and then use the mid-tones to pull the lines out further and then the lightest color in the middle. I like to shade things, especially things that are should be round by leaving the highlight in the middle. I know that you can do it on either side as well, depending on where the light source is. But for some reason, I always like doing the uh, light source in the middle or the lightest area in the middle. So now I'm taking green and going ahead and coloring in some of the leaves. A lot of these images, because they are so tiny, I did not even bother to do more than one color. So some of them are just a one color blend. I'm using a B00 to color in the glass on those vases as well as the, um, what are like test tubes, I guess that's what they are. I'm not really sure. The last bit of coloring that I'm going to show you is the cat. So we're going to go ahead and color him in with some C markers. I use C9 for the darkest areas and then C6 to go ahead and color in the rest. Those I think are the two closest colors I have to each other. So um, I probably would have used a C7 if I had one, but I don't believe I have that marker. So I'm going to color the cat in and I'm going to leave little spaces in the ears for the pink of the ears. I believe I used an R11 for that. And then for the cat's cheeks, I used an R20. And then I'm going to go in and add some white gel pen details to some of these images. I put dots on the cheeks of the cat and then some highlights on a lot of the other images. I did try to color in the skull's eyes white, but that didn't really make a difference. I do love adding white gel pen to images, especially ones that are round or have glass on them, just to kind of add a little bit of dimension to the piece. Now we're going to get ready to glue the front panel to this. I'm using my Barely Arts glue and going around the edges, going in between the door openings so that everything is stuck down. And when you pull the doors, the background's not going to come off with it. 
So I do use my pressure tool, the dry eraser, to go ahead and make sure that all of those pieces are stuck down, which is why you see that on camera. And then I pulled back all of the doors just to make sure they all opened. And I also added a string to that spider so it looked like it was hanging from the top. I'm going to use that same Barely Arts glue to add glue to the back of the panel. You can see that the Copic marker seeped through it. I'm attaching it to a four and quarter by five and a half inch black note card. And then we're going to go ahead and take a sentiment from one of the Hero Arts stamp sets and use MFT Sweet Tooth Pigment Ink to stamp it down. It's just going to say Happy Halloween. And you can see that the panel is slightly larger than the card front. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess there. And then that is the card for today. So I hope that you guys enjoy this hop. I hope that you'll click on the hashtag to join everybody and see what everyone makes. Thank you so much for watching. If you have comments or questions, leave them below and I'll see you again real soon for another video. Bye!